Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October, November 2022, paper 4, variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss questions on electromagnetic induction, quantum physics, and PET, positron emission tomography. We will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of these topics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For our question number 8, part 8, we need to state Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction. Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction and Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, they simply tell us relationship between change in magnetic flux and induced EMF. Let's try to understand both of them in a very simple way. So first of all, we can write down change in magnetic flux, means change in magnetic flux linkage, because practically always we use more than one loop of wire so we can say this is changing magnetic flux linkage and the second quantity we have that is induced emf and these two laws simply tell us relationship between these two quantities so first of all let's try to understand faraday's law Faraday's law simply tells us that if there is a change in magnetic flux linkage, it will produce induced EMF in a conductor. So simply it will produce induced EMF in a conductor. Induced EMF will oppose change in magnetic flux linkage. So we can say EMF opposes. So simply we can say EMF opposes. So the first one, this one is Faraday's law. So we can say this is what Faraday's law is telling us. So this one is your Faraday's law and this one is Lenz's law. So this is Lenz's law. So this is how these two laws they link with each other. But for this question, we need to state Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction. So simply we can say direction of induced EMF is such as to oppose the change that caused it. I mean induced EMF simply it opposes the change in magnetic flux linkage. If the magnetic flux linkage is increasing, direction of induced EMF will be in such a way that it will try to minimize. If this is decreasing, it will try to maintain that one, try to increase that one. So it will always oppose the change in magnetic flux linkage. So let me show you the answer. I hope this concept is clear to you. Now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer. This is how you need to write down your answer in your exam. You can say direction of induced EMF such as to oppose the change that caused it. Direction of induced EMF if you write down, you will get one mark. If you have written such as to oppose the change that caused it, means this is the change that caused it. So it will oppose this change. You will get the second mark. So this is how you need to state Lenz's law of electromagnetic induction. I hope this one is clear to you. For part B, it is given to us two coils of insulated wire are wound on an iron bar as shown in figure 8.1. There is a current I1 in coil 1 that varies with time t as shown in figure 8. Point two. So this is how current in coil 1 is changing with time. Now if you look at this given setup, we have one coil, coil 1. So coil 1 is simply you can say is a primary coil. So this one is primary coil and this coil, second coil, you can say this one is secondary coil. And these two coils, they are connected by iron bar. So this is just a simple transformer. So you need to realize that this is a simple transformer. If you can identify this one, then this question is quite straightforward. For part B1, it is given to us the variation with T of I1 can be represented by the equation, by this equation. X and Y are constants. We need to use figure 8.2 to determine the values of X and Y. And also we need to write down units with our answers. So first of all, if you look at this equation, this is simply telling us how I is changing with time. So we can write down in this case, we have X times sine times y times t. So if we write down the general equation for current changing with time, that one will be equal to i naught times sine of omega t. So from here we can write down x in this case. 
x is equal to i naught I mean this is equal to the amplitude of this curve so simply we can say this is equal to the amplitude the maximum value of current so this is equal to the maximum value and y in this case y is equal to omega and omega is equal to 2 pi over t so simply if I x we need to find the amplitude and the value of the amplitude from here is 0.85 so this value is 0.85 so we can write on here this is 0.85 and this is current so the unit is amps now we need to find out value of omega if we have value of time period we can find out value of omega and time period in this case is equal to 0.05 because this is the time for one complete cycle I mean for this one complete cycle so we can simply read in this case time period from t axis so we can write on 2 pi divided by time period that is equal to 0 0.04 seconds now if we solve this one our final answer up to 2sf will be equal to 160 and this is omega and unit of omega is radians per second so you need to write down here 160 and you need to write down radians per second so this is how you need to answer this question for the second part it is given to us the current in coil 1 gives rise to a magnetic field in the iron bar assume that flux density of this magnetic field is proportional to i1 and alternating electromotive force is induced across coil 2 the pd across coil 2 is made using voltmeter and has a root mean square value of 4.6 volts on figure 8.3 we need to sketch a line to show the variation with t of v2 between time t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 0 0.08 seconds for this question it is given to us that b is directly proportional to i1 in coil 1 for coil 2 it is given to us that the rms value of v2 this is equal to 4.6 volts then we need to sketch a graph between v2 and time so we need peak value of v2 peak value of v2 this one will be equal to root of 2 times rms value of 2 rms value we have rms value of v2 that is equal to 4.6 now if we simply multiply our answer in this case will be equal to 6.5 volts so this is the maximum value of v2 means the peak value of v2 we need to sketch a graph in this case first thing we need to understand in coil 1 magnetic flux is changing and the change in magnetic field in this coil is the same as the change in magnetic field in iron bar and is the same as the change in magnetic field in second coil so we are talking about ideal gas so change in magnetic field in coil 1 iron bar and in coil 2 is the same so simply we can use Faraday's law emf is equal to negative n d phi by dt d phi by dt but magnetic flux we can write on in terms of b a magnetic flux density by dt but area of the coil in this case is constant so simply we can take that out so we have n a this is d b by dt d b by dt so we can simply write on emf is proportional to negative d b by dt but it is given to us that b is directly proportional to i1 so simply we can also say that in this case emf is proportional to in this case minus db by dt so we can also say emf is proportional to negative di by dt so what exactly this is telling us this simply tells us that emf is proportional to negative of the gradient of this graph so we can also write down gradient so here we can write down gradient and this is the point you need to sketch the graph I mean emf is proportional to negative of gradient of i1 against time graph now if you look at this point at this point gradient is positive so the negative of that one is emf so emf has to be negative because the gradient is positive at this point gradient is equal to zero so emf has to be zero at this point gradient is negative so emf will be maximum and positive 
false lead and so on at this point emf will be zero because gradient is zero at this point emf gradient is positive so emf will be negative but maximum and so on at this point again gradient is zero so emf will be zero so simply we will start in this case from here negative value because gradient is positive so emf is negative then maximum value of v2 we have means the maximum value of emf in the second coil that is 6.5 so we have five here so here we will have six here will be 6.5 so we will start our graph from here and then at time 0.01 gradient zero so emf will be zero so emf will be zero at this point emf will be zero and emf will be maximum here at this time period it will be maximum then again it will be minimum here it will be minimum and then again it will be maximum so here it will be maximum again here it will be minimum so you can see so here it will be minimum so we have four one two three four five so here we will get and again here it will be maximum so you can mark these points so here will be maximum at 0.07 so here it will be minimum it will be zero and again it will be maximum so at this point it will be maximum now simply we need to connect these points and that is the curve you need to sketch so let me show you the final curve so this is how you need to sketch so if you sketch this one for this question you will get full marks so this is how we need to do this question i hope this is clear to you try to sketch this one by yourself for the last part we need to use laws of electromagnetic induction and we need to explain the shape of the graph in b2 laws of electromagnetic induction I mean we need to use faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and lenz's law of electromagnetic induction so if you look at this curve we have v2 and v2 is produced due to change in magnetic flux in the second coil in coil 2 so first point simply we can say magnitude of v2 is proportional to rate of change of flux in coil 2 magnitude of emf is proportional to rate of change of magnetic flux in coil 2 rate of change of magnetic flux in coil 2 is proportional to rate of change of magnetic flux in coil 2 so one point we can write down magnitude of emf and the second point we can say that v2 is proportional to v2 if you look at v2 v2 is proportional to the gradient of i1 minus t so we can say v2 is proportional to gradient of this point we have already discussed is proportional to gradient of i1 minus t graph because i1 is proportional to b so it's proportional to gradient of i1 minus t i1 minus t graph so simply we can say i1 minus t curve or we can simply say graph and the third point we can say emf is maximum when it curve is the steepest because v2 is proportional to the gradient so we can say v2 is maximum v2 is maximum when the gradient of this graph is maximum so we can say v2 is maximum when i1 minus t is steepest mean its gradient is highest is steepest you can also say v2 is zero or it has minimum value when i1 minus t curve is horizontal mean the gradient of i1 t graph is zero curve is horizontal or you can say gradient is zero so if you write on these points you will get three marks but the first has to be in your answer this is m this has m mark so it has to be in your answer the first point you have to write on and here if you write on two more points you will get three marks so this is how you need to answer simply you need to explain how v2 is produced v2 is produced because there is a rate of change of magnetic flux in coil 2 so we can also write down in coil 2 so emf is produced and emf magnitude of emf is proportional to rate of change of magnetic flux in coil 2 and v2 is also proportional to gradient of i1 minus t graph and v2 is maximum when the gradient is maximum gradient of i1 minus t graph is maximum and v2 is minimum is zero when the gradient of i1 minus t graph is 
is 0. Or simply you can say when this curve is horizontal, when its gradient is 0. So EMF is minimum means V2 is 0. So this is how you need to answer this problem. I hope this one is clear to you.